Hello and welcome to another exciting chapter in Business Statistics where we tack on Chapter 7 in Continuous Probability Distributions. In this chapter, we're really going to look at three continuous probability distributions, the uniform probability distribution, the normal probability distribution, and the exponential, which happen to be our three learning objectives. Look at that. Awesome. So again, we're going to start with the uniform probability distribution and use it to calculate probabilities. We're going to go to describe the characteristics of a normal probability distribution. And then finally, we're going to hit on describing the standard normal probability distribution and using it to calculate probabilities. So yes, math is coming. I mean, you're basically in a math course. If you haven't found out in Chapter 7, well, surprise. <laughs> okay, so the uniform distribution itself is a continuous distribution, of course, since that is this chapter. If you know the minimum and maximum values designated A and B, you can calculate the mean the standard deviation, any probability you wish to find. Yeah. Because the mean and the median are equal. It's typically going to be a rectangular shape. As we can actually see in our little graphic. It is completely described by its minimum values. So, when we look at the probability of X, which is the big picture, we got A and B, which basically puts our width, our length. Length, we're going to go with length here. Length is longer. Width is a little short edge. But basically, that's going to end up being found at the top by doing 1 divided by B minus A. You're like going, oh. Well, here's the formula. <laughs> Might as well give you some formulas of how to figure this stuff out in a uniform distribution. So the mean and standard deviation of a uniform distribution is calculated by taking mu equals a plus b divided by 2. Okay, Remember, again, a and b is its minimum value and its maximum value. So a is always minimum. B is always maximum. Maximum O drive. But we're going to take A plus B divided by 2. This is going to be our mean. Our standard deviation looks very similar. Then, as before, when we do standard deviation, but it has a little tweak to it because we're dealing with continuous. So instead of taking just the square root of B minus A squared, the sum of that, divided by however many numbers we have. We just do B minus A squared, divide by 12. Okay, That will be our standard deviation. Now the following equation describes the region from A to B. Which is basically the probability of X happening equals 1 divide by B minus A. So our maximum value minus our minimum. If A is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to B and 0 is elsewhere. Okay. Basically X is again almost always going to be in the middle. Rock on. No example, because we can't do anything else without example. So we have uh, Southwest Arizona State University provides bus services to students while they are on campus. A bus arrives at the North Main Street and College Drive stop every 30 minutes between 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. during weekdays. Students arrive at the bus stop at random times. The time that a student waits 
is uniformly distributed from 0 to 30 minutes. So, how is this projected for us? How do we know the probability and the length of wait mean? Basically, the probability of the student rating, wait times. So the first off, the minimum wait time can be zero minutes. That's our minimum. They can just arrive at the bus stop. The bus is there. Boom. They have to wait long. And the maximum is 30. Why 30? Well, again, this is if they just got there right after the bus has left. And since it arrives every 30 minutes, basically stops every 30 minutes, that is our max. You can only wait 30 minutes. So the range of the distribution is 30 minutes. Nice. So to find the height, basically how tall it is, the width of the rectangle, there's, there's a lot of ways to describe the same thing in math. So to find the height, we can take this. Again, using our formula, 1 divided by b minus a, We can actually use this. So let's pop out our calculator. So our handy dandy calculator is back. Let's clear out everything. And we take one divided by, again, in parentheses, gotta do that, our max minus our minimum. So 30 minutes minus zero. And that's where we get the point zero three 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 forever and ever and ever three. But three repeated. And this will be our probability. Basically the highest it's going to ever get is point zero three three. Alright. So that's an example. If we want to do the rest. We have it right here for y'all. So again, I showed you on the calculator. Well, we have the area of the uniform distribution is found by multiplying height times base. Okay, so basically the whole area of the shaded part that we see, the orange, that looks orange on your screen, but basically the shaded part from up to point three three zero point zero point zero three 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 to thirty minutes. So one divided by thirty minus zero multiplied again height times base thirty minus zero which equals one. Yeah sometimes I mean that's usually going Seems like it's going to always equal 1. But we're going to make sure we define that. Okay? May not always. But once you multiply it by the fractions, typically will be. Anyway, uh, the mean is, again, A plus B divided by 2. So 0 plus 30, again, minimum plus or maximum, divided by 2 will equal to 15. Yeah, basically half whatever uh, that we have when we add our minimum and maximum. Now the trickier one, the harder one to actually remember, is the standard deviation. Okay, so in order to do the standard deviation, again we take our maximum minus our minimum, so 30 minus 0, we're going to square it, and then divide by 12. And then we basically take the square root, of all that, and that's going to equal to 8.66. So, again, this just measures the variation in students' wait times. So, usually it's going to vary about 8 minutes and 66, or 8.66 minutes, how they want to put it. All right. Yay! <laughs>
Here's more of our distribution example. So to find the probability that a student will wait more than 25 minutes, we're going to find the area between 25 and 30 minutes. So again, it's basically zoning into being more specific. So again, probability of this. 25 is our minimum, and 30 is going to be our maximum. Again, we want to find the area between these. So again, height times base. Here we go. This is why we don't always get exactly 1. So, 1 divided by 30 minus 0. Again, that's the incomplete uh, probability. Again, we have that going on. And then the difference between on the area that we're looking at. So 25 minus 30, or 30 minus 25, we don't want a negative. So again, the maximum of this range minus the minimum of the range will equal to 5. 5 minutes, multiply, and we get to 1.1667. That's our probability of them waiting from 25 to 30 minutes. So not exactly high, not exactly low on that. I mean, it does seem that usually it's not the biggest chance of that happening. But can it happen? Yeah, that's why we got probability. Will it happen? Eh, probably. <laughs> We never know. We're just calculating the actual chance of that happening. Right. To find the probability that a student will wait between 10 and 20 minutes. Again, we find the area. So they like to give another example of this. So, again, using our formula of height times base. Okay. We find 1 divided by 30 minus 0, which again is our height. And then we take the base, which is, again, the new little area that we want to find, 20, 10. So between 10 and 20 minutes. Take the maximum, which is 20 minus 10. We'll find out that it is 10. And it'll be about 0.333 percent chance of that happening. Again, a little bit bigger because we're dealing with a bigger window. If I went for, oh, it's the chance between 15 to 20, we would get the same as previous because, again, it's five minutes. This is if we have an interval of basically 10 minutes. All right. So again, this was uniform. Now we're getting into the normal probability distribution. Yay! So the normal probability distribution is a continuous distribution with the following characteristics. Which is a lot for a web for a PowerPoint slide, but we digress. Okay. <laughs> so biggest thing is is that it's gonna be bell shaped. Anything that's normal in distribution. It's typically going to be bell shaped, as we've seen in prior chapters. And it's going to have a single peak at the center of the distribution. Okay. The total area under the curve is 1. Just like the rectangle that we just did with uniform, our bell curve for normal probability distribution is also 1. The distribution is symmetrical about the mean. Okay. So it's equal on both sides after the peak. It's not skewed in any way. It is a spontonic, asymptomatic, basically meaning the curve approaches but never touches the x-axis. It's going to always be so close. And we won't actually probably see it in this chapter of how close it can get. But if you ever see a bell curve, and you can zoom into the graph, 
really zoom, 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 and you'll always see that it will get so close, but never actually touch the x-axis. So one cool thing about normal probability distributions, or any normal distribution. The location of a normal distribution is determined by the mean. Okay, The dis uh, dispersion or spread is determined by the standard deviation. Again, using Euclid's and all those uh, imperial uh, formulas that we've done before. There is a family of normal probability distributions. There is a family. We are family. Do, 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 do. Uh, normal probability distributions agree. Do, do, do. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So here's a graph about our normal distribution. So, again, curve is going to be symmetrical. Two halves are identical. And theoretically, curve extends to negative infinity. Same thing with the positive. Our curve will extend to positive infinity. Our mean, median, and mode are all equal, all right down the middle. So again, it's going to be determined by the mean, where we're going to sit our curve. Distribution dispersion is going to be determined by that standard deviation, and the area below the curve defines the probabilities, and total area under the curve is 1. Therefore, the area to the left of the mean is 0.5, and the area to the right of the mean is 0.5. Again, the peak will always be at the mean. mean. Oh. Here's more graphs. All right, so right here, uh, the top uh, left is a normal probability distribution with equal means but different standard deviations. Again, it all pop up with 20 years of service, except uh, Caden Plant, the standard deviation is 3.1 years, uh, standard deviation for a dirt. Dunkirk plant is 3.9, and standard deviation for the Myra plant is 5.0. Notice, again, the smaller the standard deviation is, the higher that curve of peak is going to be. Okay. On the right, top right, again, is normal distribution with different means and standard deviations. Again, the smaller that standard deviation is, the higher that peak is going to be. Again, wherever the mean lies, wherever mu is, that is where we're going to set our curve. So it can change quite often. Still fun. I will say this. I like continuous. A little bit more fun. Whoa. Okay. And the bottom graph after that craziness that just happened is again normal probability distributions having different means and equal standard deviations. So you just fall at different places on the graph, but they look Pretty much exactly the same since they have exactly the same uh, standard deviation. If they all had the same mean, again, it would be the same graph. Basically, they overlap each other. All right. So the standard normal probability distribution. That was a lot very quick. Is a particular normal distribution. It has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And it has what we call the Z value. And the Z value is the sign distance between a selected value designated X and the mean mu divided by standard deviation of, um, by our standard deviation. 
any normal probability distribution can be converted to the standard normal probability distribution with the formula of so. Z is going to equal our selected value minus our mean divided by standard deviation. Okay, Are we going to be converting? Yes. Why? Because you got to know it. You got to know it for this course. Will you always use it? Depends on which uh, course of business you're going to go into. But it's good to know. But we also do this. We have what is called the Z table. Now, the Z table basically helps us uh, once we figure out the Z number. So after we do this formula, we get to find all this information. So in this example, if you have a Z equals 1.5, this reflects an area or probability of 0.4332. The entire table can be found in your book. Are we going to check out the book? Uh, probably when we do um, either practice problems, if we need to, or we're going to be doing it in the homework video. Alright, standard normal probability example. The example is here. So we got ride share services are available internationally. Customer uses a smartphone app to request a ride. Then the driver receives the request, picks up the customer, and takes the customer to the desired location. No cash is involved. The payment for the transaction is handled digitally. Suppose the weekly income of the rideshare drivers follows the normal probability distribution with a mean of $1,000 and a standard deviation of 100. What is the Z value of income for a driver who earns $1,100 per week? For a driver who earns $900 per week. Okay, So using our formula of X minus mu, the mean, Divide by our standard deviation. We take for the 1,100. 1,100 minus 1,000 divided by our standard deviation of 100. We find that equals to 1. Doing the same thing for 900. This equals to negative 1. Notice that they're each of these numbers basically 100 away from our mean. This is why they're pretty much opposites. One positive, one negative. So regardless of whether Z is positive one or negative one, the area under the curve is 0.3413. Again, this is us going to um, the table, looking it up, but it's going to be the same distance no matter what. So this is going to this table right here. And we actually find one. Like how they, I do wish when they do speak about tables and they put it in, that they at least put one slide that has the tables on it. But here we go. This is what it looks like with the empirical rule. Remember, this is back. We uh, back from chapter three. Now, when we to verify the empirical rule, Z of 1, it's a positive 1 or negative 1, so 0.3413 or times by 2, if we want to find the area between those uh, 1 standard deviation, so mean plus 1 standard deviation and the mean minus 1 standard deviation, we can actually find out that it is 68%, just like the empirical rule stated. Same thing when we find Z of 2. Corresponds to 0.4772. If we times that by 2, 0.9544, or about 95%. And then, of course, a standard deviation of 3, or Z equals 3, gives us 0.4987 times that by 2, and that shows about 
is in the area that we're basically dealing with, practically all of it. Again, I will never get touching X, but I'll be very close. Okay, so basically, we are verifying with Z our empirical rule. So again, we're going to bring it back. Just This is how it works. Everything you learn is going to always be used in this course, and it's going to always be referenced back. So as part of its quality insurance program, in our example, the Autolite Battery Company contests test on battery life for a particular D-cell Acline battery. The mean life is 19 hours. The useful life of the battery follows a normal distribution with a standard deviation of 1.2 hours. Okay. So if we want to use the empirical rule knowing the 1.2 hours as our standard deviation. About 68% of the battery We'll have a life between what two values? Well, we know it's mu plus or minus one standard deviation. So, if our mean is 19, we add and we subtract 1 times 1.2, which means that it's going to lie 68% between 17.8 and 20.2 hours. 95 does the same thing. This time, um, the mean is plus or minus 2 to get to 95%. So we take 19 plus or minus 2 times the 1.2. And of course, solving for each side, it will be 16.6 when we subtract. If we add, it's 21.4. And then lastly, 99%. It's between 15.4% and 22.6%. So instead of taking 2 or 1, we times 1.2 by 3. If we want to find 99%. And then plus and minus uh, so. So this is going to lie between 15.4 and 22.6 hours. Which I would like a battery lasting that long sometimes. But we always want them to last longer. All right. So what is the Z value of income for that driver? Apparently they, they switched all the way back to the driver example. Back to Uber. So apparently our ride actually showed up now. And again, our Z formula is X minus mu divided by standard deviation. And we found out that 1,100 is a positive 1. Again, negative 1 is not going to change any difference. Still 1. When we look it up on the table. Okay? So we know it's 0 0.3413. When it's 0. So the probability of 1,000 being uh, less than our weekly income, less than 1,100, equals to 0.3413. Again, that is our Z value. So the weekly income to be less than 1,100, probability of this is taking that 0.3413, which we know is less, and add the remaining half. Again, on this, we've only figured out from mean to our position that we want. We still have to figure out if we add the other half of the curve. So we only got one part. We need to add the other half. And we find out if we want to see the probability of weekly income to be less than 1,100 is a 0.8413 probability. I know. Fun. Fun, fun. 
It really is. Okay? And then the same thing would happen uh, if we go to the negative side, except we have less than our 5%. So if I want to find less than 900, I would subtract 0.5 from that 0.5. All right. So, another example is they're doing for 790. Okay, so again, x is 790 minus 1000 divided by 100. Again, our standard deviation. This equals a negative 2.10. So for us, a 2.1 z value, again, Z value, uh, no matter if it's negative or positive, still comes out to the same probability due to that symmetrically uh, symmetrical item of bell curves. The probability is going to be 0.4821. Okay, so our weekly income, if it's going to be less than 790, because we're on a negative side. Negative 2.10. We take 0.5 minus, again, that probability of getting 790. So it's going to equal to 0 0.0179. So it's going to be very unlikely to get less than $790. Okay, so you're going to at least earn that. Uh, probably per week, your weekly income. What this really shows is that it does. It gives us this opportunity to show um, that it's very hard to make less than a certain amount. Can it be done? Yes. It can always be done. Well, that's a 1.79% chance of it being done. So, unless you're not really doing much. <laughs> All right. Now, here we go. What is the Z value of income for a driver who earns 840? Okay. And then what is the Z value of income for a driver who earns 1,200? Now we're going to look in something that's what is the combined, the additional principle here going on. So we're going to combine two areas in the curve to figure things out. All right, so again, doing the same formula, we found out that it's negative 1.6 and 2.0. And again, they went ahead and did the chart for us that uh, for negative 1.6 is 0.4452 for um, uh, the... 2.0, we have 0.4772. Again, that's the regular 2.0 standard deviation. And all we want to do is find out what's the probability that they're going to earn 840 and between 1,200. So, how likely is their income going to fall between those two? We add 0.4452 plus 0.4772 to get us about 92%. About 92.24% of drivers are going to have a weekly income between those two points. Nice. Again, if it takes the, the peak, you know it's going to be a high percentage. All right. So they're going to do it again. A little bit different here. So they're going to want to know, what is the Z value of income for a driver who earns $1,250? Again, comes out 2.50. And what is the Z value of income for a driver who earns $1,150? 1.5. Notice, this is different. Why is it different? Well, both of these are positives. Right here, this is a negative and a positive on the Z numbers. So they're across the mean. 
here, they are both on the same side of our mean. So if I want to find the area between these two, basically from 1.5 to 2.5 Z, um, again, we find the two, and then we're going to subtract them. So between 1,150 and 1,250, we take 0.4938 minus 0.4332, and equals to 0 0.0606. Okay, so watch out for this. If it's negative and positive z values, we're going to add the probability. If they're both positive, we're going to subtract. They're both negative. We're basically going to take the two items and again subtract the two probabilities. Again, the probability will always be positive. But if it falls on the same side of our mean, we need to subtract. All right. Don't worry. It gets easier. Practice makes perfect. We all know that. All right. Here's some fun. You're probably going to go, well, what, what, what's all these little, when we see a Z chart, what's those top numbers doing? Well, they help us actually find the value of x. We don't have it. So here we go. Leading Tire and Rubber Company wishes to set a minimum mileage guarantee on its new MX100 tire. Tests revealed that the mean mileage is 67,900. Again, there's our mean, our mu, with a standard deviation of 2,050. And that the distribution follows the normal distribution. Yay! Leiden wants to set the minimum guaranteed mileage so that no more than 4% of tires will have to be replaced. What minimum guarantee mileage should Leiden guarantee? Let X represent the minimum guaranteed mileage. All right. So, how does this work? Well, we first know that 4% is, again, 0 0.04. But we want to make sure, again, that no more than 4% of tires. So it can't go past 5. 5%. 5 okay. So for us, we're going to find the probability right here real quick. So Z, again, equals X minus mu divided by standard deviation. For us, we do find that 0.05% at 0.4599. Yeah. So, basically what happens is that they take 0.04. It can't be more than 0 0.460. So, the closest we can get is 0.4. 599, which again is 0 0.05. I like that. It's fun. So since it's stuck right there, one more over will basically be more than 4%. Again, 0 0.04. Can't reach that. So the highest we can ever get is right there at 0 0.4599, which happens to fall right here at 1.7 5 <laughs> I love how they do that but it is that's how they get negative 1.75 using the table they go 1.7 and since this is falling under column 0 0.05 the closest we can get 
to 0.4600 while going over, we get our number. This is our z value. Alright, so for this, we now plug in our formula. And then we have to do algebra. And everybody just went, what? <laughs> so, let me pop up the calculator, because it should show you all. What is going on here? Alright, since now we know Nate, oh, clear, clear. So we have 1.75. This is negative. And to find x, first we've got to get rid of the denominator, the bottom part of the fraction, by multiplying on each side. So we'll get negative 3,587.5 equal to x minus 67,900. So then we add 67,900. This is where we get the 64,312. And then we basically rounded it down. But that's how they solve for x. So if we need to solve for x, multiply after we find z, and then add the mean. Basically, that's all that's going on. So x equals 64,312. That's how many mileage that they should guarantee it's the minimum fun 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 okay so we have finished chapter seven that's the end of the lecture now we have i think one two three four five questions so let's see what we can do so again as you know always take um time do, do the question before I go over and see how many you get right. And if you didn't understand anything, let's see if I can help you on that path. All right. So first off, a uniform distribution is defined over the intervals from 6 to 10. Okay, remember we're doing uniform. So that's the beginning all the way back here. So we're using these formulas right here. Back to the question. So first off, what are values A and B? Where's the values? Remember, A is going to be the minimum, and B is going to be the maximum. So A equals 6, B equals 10. Now it's time to find the mean. Well, the mean, taking out our Honda Dunny calculator, Okay, so remember our mean is going to take the minimum plus the maximum. So 6 plus 10 equals 16 and divide by 2. Okay, comes out to 8. All right, okay, next we need to find standard deviation. Standard deviation and what it was is again the square root of b minus a squared divided by 12. So again, we take b minus a, which is 4. We're going to square it, and then divide by 12, and then we take the square root of it. So it ends up being about 1.1547. We went four decimal places again. Always read your problem. Make sure you understand how many decima uh, decimal places it needs to go. Okay. So, D, show the probability of any value between 6 and 10 is equal to 1. Okay. So basically we're trying to find the height. And so the height in itself, 1 divided by, remember, is our 
Uh, maximum number B minus A, our minimum. Okay. And basically it's times itself right now. Because really we're trying to find one. Oh. That's actually squared, sorry. But basically taking 10 minus 6 divided by 1. Again, which is four, four times 0.25 comes out to one. Okay, so basically we just flip the fraction if we want to figure out how is it equal to one. Okay, mostly when we deal with the big area, it's going to usually always equal to one. Now E, F, and G, we're going to kind of change it a little bit. So what is the probability of the random variable is more than 7? Okay. So if we want to find it more than 7, first we take our height. We always take our height. 1. Ah. Clear, clear. 1. Now I'm always going to put it into the formula. So 1 divided by 10 minus 6 equals to 0.25. Then we're going to multiply it by our new links, basically. So 10 minus 7. Divide by uh, 1. Comes out to 0.75. So really all it comes out to. And so 75% is going to be greater than 7. Okay. What is the probability that the random variable is between 7 and 9? Okay. So now we just change it up just a little bit. And again... Uh, since we know the height is 0.25, easy percentage, we'll multiply it by now our new length, which is 9 minus 7, divide by 1, equals to 0.5. So about the probability of the random variable between 7 and 9 is about half. 50% shot there. So what is the probability that the random variable is equal to 7.91? So for a continuous probability distribution, the area for anything that doesn't give us a range and wants to know is equal to something is going to be zero for us. And just because it's not continuous, it has to have an area. All right. So that was question one. All right. Now we're dealing with normal probability. Yay! Normal probability. Da 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 da. The mean of the normal probability distribution is 500. The standard deviation is 10. Okay? So this is using the empirical rule. Remember, standard deviation of 1, 2, and uh, 3, basically. So 68%, 95%, and what does practically all the observations, that's the 99% one. So 3. So what we'll do. And our grass calculator. Is again, we take one. Let's figure out what's one. So one times our standard deviation. It's point 0.1. And then all we do is add and subtract. Something's not right there. One times 10. There we go. 
I guess I did point one because yeah, it's supposed to be ten. So five hundred plus ten shows us our height. Our maximum value is five ten. That's our positive. Our negative is five hundred minus ten, which is four ninety. Same thing that we would do with ninety five percent. We take our standard deviation, multiply by two, ends up being twenty. We add it to our mean, which is 520. There's our positive. And for our negative, we minus 20, be 480. So 480 is our minimum. 520 is our maximum. That shows all the observations will lie in 95%. Last but not least, our practically all, our 99%, is 3 times our standard, which happens to be 30. So again, add 500, the max is 530, and subtract it from 500, shows our minimum is 470. Okay, Again, this will practically encompass all observations in this normal probability. Okay. Next. All right, so a normal population has a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 4. Compute the z-value associated with 25. Um, with 25. Okay, so for this, we know the formula for our z-value was x. Find my calculator. <laughs> Calculator. So it was x25 minus our mean, which is them mean 5, divided by standard deviation. So this is 1.25. Okay. What is the proportion of the population between 20 and 25? Okay. Now we need to use our z table. So I'm gonna. Uh, pause real quick to get to the book. Okay, so I brought up your book again. You have to go to your ebook, find the table, which is in appendix B, which is all the way down in your continents after you uh, click on the three bars. And make sure you go to appendix B tables and then appendix B3 area under normal curve. Okay, now we want to find our z value. And again, from our calculator, z value is 1.25. Okay, so we're going to find 1.2. Then we got to find the column with 0.5. So scroll down. And it's going to end up being 0. Go ahead and highlight. Because it's going to make me um, 0 0.3944. Again, 1.25. So there is the proportion uh, of the population that is between 20 and 25. Okay, That's a probability of it. So 0 0.3944. Now, we're going to close this up, put that down for right now. Now I ask what proportion of the population is less than 18 times less than 18. So again, we need to find our Z. So calculator right here, take X minus 20 divided by R. Should be our standard deviation. So it looks like at less than 18. Okay. All right. 
So let's figure out this going on. <sighs> so it wants to know less than 18. I don't think it should change that. So, looks like we got an error going on. So, eight, 18 minus 20 is, of course, 2, negative 2. There we go. Divide by our standard, which comes out to negative 5.5. Yeah. So, <laughs> for some reason, uh, the book tries to help y'all out and provide answers without the explanation, and somehow they put the wrong standard deviation. Error. So if you do open up the PowerPoint presentation, watch out for that. Very odd. Okay. So we have negative 0.5%. Again, we're going to find the Z value. So we need to pop up our Z chart. And since it's 0.5 right here, and there's no decimal after it, it's zero, we get 0.1915. That is our Z value. Okay. Next, since we're trying to find the proportion less than this. So this is like the tail end. If we're looking at this, it's the tail end over here. Because basically what we found out is the proportion over here. So since we're looking for less than, we need to take our calculator. Take 0.5, which is half. Again, this is half and this is negative. Find less than by minus 0.1915, which equals to 0 0.3085. Okay? A little bit fun, a little bit confusing. I understand. If you got questions, please email me. I will totally answer them in due time. <laughs> but yeah. So we're really looking at that. Watch out for these less than or more than. Because if it's positive, it's going to always be more than. Unless it actually do says less than. And it's fun right there. But those ends, again, we're going to subtract. Surprisingly, we didn't do an addition one. We're probably going to see it with question 19. All right. So two left. Next practice problem. Question 19. The Internal Revenue Service, IRS, reports that average refund in 2017 was 2,878 with the standard deviation of 520. Assume the amount refunded is normally distributed. I wish that was the case. But anyway, what percentage of the refunds are more than 3,500. Okay. So here we go. Here's some fun stuff that we're going to actually come out with. So again, doing our Z formula. Take our calculator. We're going to take X minus R uh, mean. Okay, then divide by our standard deviation of 20. Okay, so we got 1.19. We're going to go ahead and round it. Um, basically, two decimal places. Again, that's how the chart works. So 6 rounds that up, ends up being 1.2. Okay, so now we need to look 
at our uh, Z chart. So now we pop up the Z chart again. Here we go. Hey, wonder if I can remove these. Right. Okay. There we go. So for A. We know it's 1.2. Here it is. Here is the number. Again, for 1.2, 0. So it's 0.3849. And again, it's going to ask for more than. So it's more than this. So since it's more than, we're finding the tail. So we, with our calculator, we again take 0.5 minus 0.3. 3849 comes out to 0 0.1151. Okay. So that's the probability of more than 3,500. That's the tail after uh, our probability to get 3,500 of 0 0.3849. So again, if it's more than or less than, we're looking at tails. If they're trying to find the area in between two numbers, that's where we've got to do some addition All right. or subtraction, depending on where it falls. If it both falls, again, they're both positive numbers, we subtract. If they're one's negative, one's positive, we add, so forth and so on, just like we did in our examples. Whew. I think I've talked for a while now. <laughs> Alright, so B, let's just scroll down. B says, what percentage of the refunds are more than 3,500 but less than 4,000? Alright, so we know our 3,500. This is the probability for this, for more than. Now we're looking for a higher number. So for 4,000. So again, using our... Our calculator find the Z number. So X minus 2878 for our mean divided by our standard deviation of 520 comes out to 2.16. Again, two decimal places. So now we gotta find 2.1 six is this column 2.1 six which is 0 0.4846. We'll highlight that green. So here's our two numbers. Notice that both of the Z numbers are positive and they're in the same side of the mean, basically on the positive side. Because of this, to find the area, it's gonna be a smaller probability. So we need to subtract the two. So 0.4846 minus 0.3849 comes out with a probability of the refund in between 3,500 and 4,000 will be 0 0.0997. Okay. So there we go. There's an in-between, but both on the same side. Well, now it's going to ask, what percentage... Of the refunds are more than two thousand four hundred, but less than four grand. So again, they're using basically the same <laughs> uh, numbers, just the one prior. So now we're going to use the green one. But again, we're going to find our Z number. So I'll take an X minus our mean divided by our standard comes out to a negative 0.92 now again under Z numbers that doesn't really matter I mean, it just doesn't uh, so it's always positive we just gotta find it so 0 0.92 so 0 1 2 so here it is and blue 
that is our probability of being uh, 2,400, the area of that one being more than that. So since these two are now on different sides, one's a negative Z number when we calculated the Z, and the other was positive. Because that was a positive 2.16. Since they're on opposite sides of the mean, we actually have to add when we find the area between the two. So I would take 0 0.3212 plus our 0.4846. And the probability of the refund being between 2,400, uh, more than that, and less than 4,000, is a 80%, um, 80.58%. 80 okay. Woo. That one's a fun question. <laughs> this one actually does make you think finding the Z numbers and knowing how they work in our normal. Again, if they both are positive Z numbers, we'll end up subtracting to find the area between the two numbers. If one's negative and one's positive, we add our two probabilities to find the area. Whew. Hopefully I didn't confuse y'all. All right. Last but not least, question 27. According to media research, the typical American listened to 195 hours of music in the last year. This is down from 290 hours, four years earlier. Dick Tithal is a big country and western music fan. Yeah, for him. Uh, he listens to music while working around the house, reading and writing in his truck. Assume the number of hours spent listening to music follows a normal probability distribution with a standard deviation of 8.5 hours. Woo! If Dick is in the top 1% in terms of listening time, how many hours did he listen last year? Oh, so this is going to hit us with this last part that we have right here. So we're going to have to... Find Z numbers. All right. So again, we're going to figure this out. We already have our mean, mean, which is 195 hours. Okay. This whole, this is down right now. We're not uh, dealing with because um, that's a prior information. So we're looking at current. So 195 is our mean, 8.5 is our standard deviation. What we got to find is this top 1%. So to find the Z note, okay, we need first get to our chart. So here's our chart. And we're going to be looking For our top one percent, so again, that's going to be really as close as we can get. If we're looking at top one percent, first off, let's get rid of these white. We got to figure out. What number are we actually looking for to be in the top 1%? I mean, the rest of the numbers of our 0.5. So, calculator. So, we're looking at basically 0 0.01. That is our 1%. If we know one side, since we're always on one side, 0.5, we're stuck at 0.49%, 49% basically, on the half. All right, so we need to find as close to this as we can. This is why we're kind of like in the higher fours over here. So we cannot go beyond 0.49. So the highest we can go is 0.4399. We're looking. So, 
as we look through, we go, 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 and there's 4.49. Notice that that's higher. We can do that. So our number in this chart has to be the next one right here. So here it is. It's 0.4898, which happens to be 2.3. Like 0.232. Yeah, I think they're off. Just again, looks like their book, uh, the book is trying to be a little bit off. They have an error because they went to 0 0.4901, which again is higher than what we have. So we're going to do it the right way. Yay! I love it when it does that. So it's actually going to be 2.32 because it's below 0.49. Wait. I'm thinking less than. We want to be in the top 1%. No, the book is right. Okay. Again, sometimes that happens. It's rethinking of what the book is asking. Since it wants to be in the top 1, it has to be higher than that to be in the top 1. So it is 2.33. We have to be first number that crosses over that threshold. Oi. It's easier than what it sounds like. <laughs> it's just the way that the wording is sometimes. Now, he has to be in the top 1%. So since he's in the top 1%, it has to be greater than 0.4900. Uh, zero, zero due to the fact that we're in it, we're more than 1%. That's what it is, it's in the tail. Tail, tail time. So 2.33, okay? So that is our Z value. Using our formula, remember Z equals X minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So for us, since we know to be in the top 1%, you have to have at least 2.33 in Z value. So using our algebra, again, we're going to multiply by standard deviation, which is 8.5. And then we're going to add our mean, which is 195. So it ends up being about 214.8 hours of listening. It's a lot of hours of music, but I think that typically is done. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep the chart. All right, assume that the distribution of times four years earlier also follows the normal probability distribution with a standard deviation of 8.5 hours still. How many hours did 1% who listened to the least music actually listen? Okay, so now we're trying to find a negative Z. Okay, remember, Z and negative Z are the same standard. Okay, they are still the same probability of it happening. So it's still here, it's still 2.33. But because we want to know the least music actually listened, the 1%, we're on the opposite side. We're on the negative side. Okay. But we also have to watch out for our mean. Our mean has changed. They want to know four years ago. So now it's 290. This problem likes to throw some really good loops to you. So using our calculator, again, start with 2.33. We need to turn this to negative. Okay. Times again, 8.5 our standard, which happens to be the same. And then add our mean, which is 290, turns out to 270.2 um, the, that the 1% who listened to the least music actually listened to. Huh. Go figure. So, there we go. That's it of chapter 7. That's all the practice problems. That's everything that you got. Right there, nice and bundled up together. So, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. As you can see, again, 
it's always fun. Always have to look, look at what the question asks. And again, it doesn't hurt to make mistakes. It's just as long as you learn from those. But anyway, I will see y'all next time. Enjoy. And hopefully this helps you out. Don't forget to use that Z chart. <laughs>